Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Happy Friday if you're watching live. My husband and I just got back from a walk, and I end my nice glow is Florida sweat. I'm actually sweating profusely and I feel so good. All right. <laughs> Tell me where you're tuning in from. Uh, Florida is beautiful today. I had somebody message me yesterday and they said, Hey, are you missing your kids playing outside in your lake? Are you missing your kids being outside in Minnesota? And I said, no, my kids are outside in Florida. <laughs> uh, we're loving it. So Tell me where you're tuning in from. Here's what we're doing in the mornings is I've made a teeny little shift. In the mornings, I like to talk about mindset or give you a thought for the day. And I decided to throw in a keto tip as well because I know that there's a lot of people that just want to be told what to do. If you're looking for recipes, there are tons of them here. If you wanna to go to ketomomsecrets.com and click on recipes, you can have a lot of them. You can send me a message, I will help you. Now, there's a couple things I wanna do for this morning. Number one, it's Friday. Let's celebrate. I want you to celebrate below or tell me one thing that you did this week that you are, that you're just happy for yourself. You wanna celebrate over yourself. You wanna say like, hey, I did a good job. What is one thing that you can acknowledge? Because you might not have somebody in your life that says, I see you. Hey, good job. Hey. You're doing amazing. And I want this community to be that. And so as you're tuning in, or maybe you're watching the replay, what is one thing you can celebrate for the week? I like to tell people, listen, oftentimes we think that we can't celebrate until we get to the end goal. Most of the time people quit before they get to the end goal. So let's celebrate on a daily and a weekly basis. On a daily basis, you can be like, Steve and I go for a walk every single day. I almost didn't go for the walk with him this morning because we stayed out late yesterday. We went to Orlando. We went and visited our CEO. We had a great business conversation. We didn't get home until midnight. Probably didn't get to bed till approximately one. Woke up a little late. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to read my book. I want to sit here and read. And then my husband's like, I'm going to go for a walk. And I was like this. All right, I'm going to go too. Uh, I'm going to celebrate that we walked every single day. It's been a goal that we have to do in the mornings. I'm going to celebrate that I've been reading every single day. Yes, some of you are like, listen, I exercised three times this week. Or, hey, I ate really well. I, I'm, I, maybe I intermittent fasted. Or maybe it has nothing to do with your health. Maybe you're like, yeah, I went on a date with my spouse. I'm going to celebrate. Or I'm going to go on a date tonight. <clears throat> maybe whatever it is. Let's celebrate you. I see you. I would say, um, if I'm looking through and some of you are sharing, like Cassie, I love that. Cassie's like, I use my vibration plate every single day, which helps her, if you do some Googling, that's just a, uh, it helps with, what is, how do you explain that, Steve? It helps with the flow of your blood? You have one, a, vibra uh, a plate. It helps drain your lymphatic system. Drains your lymphatic system, my husband understands all of that. Hey, Cassie, good job, I love it. Lacey, good job. Like, I want you <clears throat> to, sometimes you've got to be your own cheerleader. I want the Keto Mom page to be that for you. I want you just to acknowledge yourself and be like, yeah, I did have a good week. Or, or I got up early. Or one thing. What's one thing you can celebrate about yourself? All right. <clears throat> I have a thought. Oh, shoot. Another story for you, and then I have another thought. <laughs> yes, Steve knows what he's talking about. Um, also... As you're celebrating yourself, and there's a couple of things that were going on in my mind this morning. Uh, Steve and I were listening to a really great message on the way home. We had a two and a half hour drive last night, 
and we were listening to a message and I'm not going to go into the entire message, but it also brought me to the story that happened last night. So Erwin McManus, who this is the book we're going to be going through starting Monday. You guys, is this backwards? Oh, I didn't even, wait, maybe, maybe I did flip it. I look like I'm backwards. We're going to do something. Are you ready? I like to do this actually. All right. Uh, we're going to be going through this book starting on Monday. I listened to a message from him on the way home, and he was just simply sharing, uh, and you might not know your Bible, but he shared a story in the Bible of Gideon and how Gideon, how God chose Gideon's men to fight an army. Hear me on this for a second, okay? Follow me. Don't tune out. And how they had to do certain things to narrow their army down to 300 people versus like 100,000 people, right? There's lots of different stories in this, but one of the ways that God chose the people to fight in the army was the way they drank water. And he explained it on how, hey, send all your men down to the water. 10,000 of them basically looked down. They were so focused on themselves and water that they weren't looking up to at least be aware of what was going on around them. 300 of the men were doing it to where they were actually still staying aware of what was going on around them. So I was listening to the story last night and I was like, I've never heard it said like that before. I've never <clears throat> thought about how the way that God shows these men were, they were looking up, they were drinking water, they were aware because they were still in a battle. So <clears throat> that, that day or that night, we also stopped at a gas station. And it's interesting because at the gas station, there was a man that I kind of, I was watching my girls pick out some, some food. And then I saw this man kind of fumbling around with, he was trying to grab all this stuff. And I, I looked and I was trying to pick out something for the girls to eat. And then I caught out of the corner of my eye, he dropped his keys. And so it would have been, and then I, and like I could see him trying to swoop down, trying to grab them. It would be easy for you to bypass something like that and be like, oh, he's got it. But I saw it and I thought I should turn around and help him. So I turned around as he was kneeling down, I'm like, hey, let me grab those for you. And I grabbed his keys and he was trying to hold on to all of his stuff. And he's like, thank you. And he walks up to the counter. I grabbed the girls like meat and cheese sticks that they wanted and walked up to the counter. And he said, hey, uh, I want to buy her food for her. And I was like, oh, you don't have to do that. And he goes, no, thank you for helping me. I want to buy your food for you. And I thought, man, that was so nice. Like, first of all, I was listening, we were listening to this message by Erwin about like keeping your head up and being aware. Second of all, one little act of kindness can help somebody else out and you don't know how you're going to be blessed by it. So I opened up the door to him as he's walking out and I was like, man, thank you. And he's like, you're welcome. And we had a quick conversation. Moving forward till this morning, I'm looking down at the sidewalk, walking, and all of these things, like, isn't it interesting how you hear one story and then you kind of moves into the rest of your day and you can't help but think about it? And then I was walking this morning and I'm looking down, A, walking where I'm walking, and two, I'm pretty sure I was on my phone. And my husband always looks up and he always watches people. And he's waving and he's saying hi. And he's like, man, all these people wave at me. And I was like this, what people? And then I was like, oh. The Lord would have gotten rid of me. He would have been like, yo, Stephanie, you're not focused on anything else around you. Look up. Is that a good message, babe? Yeah, that's good. I, I got a spanking. <clears throat> what? I didn't know that. That's, that's because good. it's going on in my head. So it's interesting because I just wanted to share that with you. Look up. Pay attention to what's around you. God has people in your path that first of all need you to help them, but you never know what, what you will be blessed with as well. But you're not gonna see it if you're not watching and looking for it. So it was so funny how all of these little stories correlated to them this morning. I was like, I don't wanna be let go. I don't wanna be the 10,000. I don't wanna be the one where the God's like, hey, you can go back to camp. You're not paying attention. I, I don't want that. Praise the Lord that I heard the keys fall and I had enough like, I'm going to help him. And I'm not saying that to be like, hey, I helped him. He blessed me. So interesting. And there's one more thing I'm going to tie to this. And then I do have a keto message for you. Uh, our girl. So one of the reasons we moved down to Florida is we moved down here to be a part of Life Church. It is an incredible church. 
We love, our girls are plugged into the youth. And a message that the girls got a couple weeks ago, I was like, huh, that was so good. He took the story from Leviticus. He was talking to these kids and he's, and I actually, here's what I actually don't remember. I wish, I, I know I have notes in my phone. I don't remember how he tied Leviticus into these um he was telling the kids like you can learn from any book in the Bible and they were, and they've been teaching them how to like how to learn from it, how to apply it. But what I do remember is a story he shared. And he shared how this pastor was in the men's bathroom and he was using the urinal and he was going to the bathroom minding his own business, but he realized that somebody spit their gum in the urinal and it was stuck in between the you know, where the, where everything drains. And he said, I had this thought that is not my responsibility. And he's like, why would somebody spit their gum in there? So disrespectful, but the janitor will get it right. He's about to walk out of the bathroom and then he thought, Oh my goodness. If I'm, Oh, I think he was teaching the kids how to be a servant. Was that right? Steve, was that the main, no. how to serve? Right. And so he said, why would I leave something that I clearly know shouldn't be there. I can do something about it. I don't have to be praised for it. Like, I don't have to leave that for the janitor, even though it's his job, because he's going to come in here and he's going to go, why would somebody do that? So he said, he told all these youth, he's like, listen, I went to the, wrapped my hand in paper towels and I stuck my hand in the urinal and I cleaned it out. No, he's like, I'm not telling you to say that I, you know, what I did, but he's like, why don't you look up? Pay attention, be aware, do something for somebody. You are not better than anybody else. He's like, I'm not better than a janitor. So he told that story. He goes on and actually, he t and he goes, and somehow he ends up in another urinal with the same exact thing. And he's like, the Lord wants me to clean all these urinals. And he's telling the youth, I wrap my hands and stick my hands down there. And it's interesting because when you hear a story or you hear somebody say like, I, I say, look up, pay attention, pay attention to your surroundings. Where can you be a blessing to other people? I'm not kidding. Every time we get out of our car, guess what? There's garbage right by my foot, whether it's at Costco, wherever we're going. And I walked past a bottle the other day and I walked back and picked it up because in my head, I'm like this. That's not my responsibility. I didn't throw that on the floor. And then you, you have this like, oh, but I can pick it up. Ew, but that's dirty. But guess what? Somebody's going to have to do it. Or the other day, we, Steve and I were on a walk, and it was recycling day. Well, somebody's recycling bin kind of got a little tipped over. It was still in their yard. It was in the space that it could be. We kind of walked by it, and I went like this. Ugh. For a split second, I was like, it's not a big deal. It's all by their box. And then we probably got, what, three or four houses in front of it, Steve? And I was like... I have to go back. And he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I've got to go pick up that garbage because it's not the responsibility. Of, I shouldn't, if I say like, well, that person will get it. I can do it. So we walked back. I picked up the recycle, put it in the box. Just so happens the owner of the house walks out and he's like, thank you. And I say all of that because I want to give you an awareness of you matter. And if you ever walk by something or somebody and think that's their responsibility, I didn't do it. I shouldn't have to. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you to do it. Pick up the garbage, serve somebody else, get your eyes off of just you and look for somebody to help or to serve. And nobody, they might not even know you did it. You might not get a thank you, but guess what? You never know the seed that you're planting. You never know. The keys that I picked up, the seed of helping somebody, he returned the favor and bought my snacks, which was super, super um, great. So my challenge to you this weekend is look for a place you can serve. Keep your eyes up. Pay attention to other people around you. Pick up the garbage and you're not good. You're not too good to do something that somebody else is paid to do. What do you think? Is that good? Is that good preaching? No. That's not preaching. It's just sharing. All right. Here's a practical thought for you today. <laughs> um, that's your mindset for the morning. I am going to tell you, we are start, I'm, I've been listening to this book on Audible. 
It's incredible. We'll start this on Monday. So you can tune in here and you can either join us and just listen to the lives. A lot of you have ordered the book, so I'm super excited. And my thought for you today around your diet, your health, is around my shoes. So a practical thought is this. Your body, if you're doing keto or low carb, but you're working on becoming healthy, your goal is to lose some fat, your body is speaking to you. And a very practical tip is I need you to listen to it. So yesterday I said, hey, here's a keto tip for you in the morning. Pay attention to how much water you're drinking and stop eating if you're not hungry. Today, I want you to go, I also, while you're paying attention to others and your surroundings, you've got this awareness of like, where can I serve and where can I plant a seed? I also want you to start listening to your body because your body doesn't lie. Your body's gonna tell you if you're tired. Your body's gonna tell you like, hey, you ate something and I actually feel like garbage. And we often ignore the signs. Hey, I don't feel good. Hey, something is hurting. I actually think I need more sleep. Oh my goodness. I'm stressed out, like my brain is hurting, and what are you gonna do to fix it? So, <clears throat> I wear these shoes when I go for a walk. The other day, I knew better. My hip has been hurting, like my, my back, and I, and I was like, I think it's my shoes. These are meant, they're cross-training shoes, but they're meant to lift weights. I put these shoes on the other day, and I knew better because I wore these shoes two days, two, two days prior. When I wore these shoes, I felt better. My back didn't hurt. When you eat better, I'm assuming you know. You, I have people tell me this all the time. When I eat low carb, when I cut down the sugar, when I eat a specific way, I feel better. The other day I put these shoes on and I was too lazy to take them off because I forgot they hurt my back. So I went for a walk, I think it was yesterday, and I was like this, oh, I should have taken the extra five seconds to take these shoes off and put them on. This morning, I put these shoes on and my back didn't hurt. Your body tells you something. So a very quick keto low carb health tip is listen to your body. And maybe if you're overly tired, you need to shut off your screens earlier, stop watching and stop, stop staying up so late. You know, if you're feeling a certain way after you eat certain foods, pay attention to how you're feeling and go, I actually don't think my body likes all of that dairy or clearly my body doesn't like that sugar. Hey, here's how I'm feeling because I can't, I can't 100% say, here's the keto diet, here's how you should eat, <clears throat> here's what's gonna help you lose the weight. You actually have to pay attention. If you don't and you ignore the cues, it could lead into something even worse. If I keep wearing these shoes, it might cause long-term, it, like hurt, it hurts my knee and it hurts my back. When I wear these shoes, which are meant for more walking, running, it doesn't hurt my back. The support is here. The support is not here. So your body is telling you something. I need you to listen. Well, I don't need you to listen, but your body needs you to listen. So that is your practical tip of the day. Uh, and what I, I hope you have an amazing Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Your presence matters. I do want this, this to be a place where you can come, be encouraged, learn something and then take it out and apply it. That is what you should do with anything that you learn. So thank you for tuning in. Tune, continue to tune in. There's recipes, a whole bunch of different things shared on the page. You can go to ketomomsecrets.com, send me a message or ask a question below and I will connect with you that way. Uh, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.